Okay, Math for College, we're going to begin to looking at polynomials and factoring and monomials. Uh, uh, as we get started here. Uh, you can see that these are exact questions that are taken from a, a college entrance exam that I've, I've worked with. And it asks you to do 4x cubed times 3xy squared times 2xy squared. And hopefully you remember that you multiplied those coefficients out front. 4 times 3 is 12 times 2 is 24. And then you're going to add the exponents here. So 3 plus 1 plus 1 is 5. And for the y value, we have y to the fourth when we add those two. So the correct answer here is this one. Uh, n to the seventh to the eleventh. That'll be like n to the seventh times n to the seventh times n to the seventh times, and that'll be eleven times that you're doing that. So it'd be seven plus seven plus seven, a total of eleven times. So you're gonna multiply those, and you get n to the seventy-seventh. We're gonna skip thirty, but we are gonna look at the basics of operations that we want to be able to work with. If you have the same bases, a and a, a to the x times a to the y, it's a to the x plus y. So you add the exponents. But here, if you're taking a power to a power, it becomes a to the m times n. And if you were dividing two expressions with the common bases, it's going to be a to the s minus r. We subtract the exponents. So let's try a few examples here, okay? Uh, for example, here we have 3x squared times 5x uh, to the 5th. That's going to be 15x to the 7th. Again, we add our exponents in that situation. Let's try number 3. 2 times the 7 gives us 14. It's going to be a to the 6th, b to the 11th, and c to the 5th. Sometimes the problems start to look a little bit different. And here we're going to distribute across subtraction. So 4x squared times 3x to the 5th, 12x to the 7th. Subtraction sign. Then 4 times 6 is 24. And x squared times x to the 4th is x to the 6th. Okay. Now it's switching. We've got powers to powers. So x to the 3rd to the 4th. We multiply because that would be like x to the third times x to the third times x to the third times x to the third. So you could either add three four times or you could just take four times three and get x to the twelfth. Look at number eight. This would be like 2x squared y to the fifth times 2x squared y to the fifth times 2x squared y to the fifth. And that gives us a total of 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. <laughs> Excuse me. And then we get x to the 6th, and we get y to the 15th. So notice it was 2 to the 3rd, which was 8, and then we multiplied our exponents after that. So let's try to do this one without writing it all out. Negative 3 to the 4th. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Times negative 3 again is negative 27. And times negative 3 again is 81. Then we can multiply our exponents. We get a to the 12th, a to the 4th, c to the 20th. Now one last example I'd like to do for you is number 12 before we go to the back side. Here we have to cube this piece. 2 cubed is 8, x to the 12th. We have to square this piece, so we get 9x to the 10th. But now you have another operation. We multiply. 8 times 9 is 72, and because we are multiplying, we will add those exponents, x to the 22nd power. So there's a, a few problems from your notes. Well, what happens if we divide? Well, x to the 6th divided by x to the 4th is x squared, because we subtract the exponents. In this situation, 10 divided by 5 is 2. x to the 3rd divided by x squared will be x to the 1st. And y to the 3rd over y to the 7th. Now, it's going to be a y to the 4th, but will the y to the 4th be in the top or will it be in the bottom? And the answer is it's in the bottom because 
there are more in the bottom than there are in the top. So only three of the y's will cancel in the bottom, staying with the top. What if you have 8 over 12? Those don't divide like the previous ones do, but they do simplify. It simplifies to 2 over 3. Notice the x to the 3rd over x to the ninth. we have x to the 6th, and it'll be in the denominator because there's more in the denominator, and then y to the 5th in the numerator. What if we have negative exponents? Well, negative exponents move to where they're not. So that becomes x to the 3rd times x to the 6th, which is x to the ninth. If you see a negative exponent, just move it. So this one would be 3 on top, 9 on bottom. The x squared stays placed because it doesn't have a ne negative exponent. But the x to the negative third is going to move down to become x to the third. The y to the negative fourth is going to move down because it's a negative 4. And the y to the negative fifth is going to move up to become y to the fifth because it was negative as well. Now we can simplify this. 3 over 9 is 1 over 3. Looks like the x has become x to the fifth in the denominator. But in the numerator, we have just one y. One y. You could just write as y if you want to as well. Now for number six, before we actually deal with these negative exponents, we need to square things first. We can't move them yet. If we square, we get 9x to the negative 4. And we get 2 cubed is 8x to the negative 15th. Move the exponents to where they're not, because they're negative. 9x to the 15th over 8x to the 4th. Now you can simplify it. We have 9x to the 11th over 8. I'm going to do one more problem with you, and that will be number 8 here. Notice that the negative exponent is on the outside. If you have a negative exponent on the outside, simply flip everything to get rid of it. So everything was in the top, I put to the bottom. Everything was bottom, I put to the top. I didn't worry about changing those negatives. All that happens is it changes that to a positive. I used up that negative on the outside by flipping everything on that inside. Now I can cube everything. 2 cubed is 8 x to the 5th cubed is x to the 15th. y to the negative 1 cubed is y to the negative 3rd. 4 cubed is 64. x to the negative 6th. And y to the 3rd. Notice what's going to happen. 3 more y's will come down there. And 6 more x's will come up there. 8 over 64 is 1 over 8. I will have a total of 21 x's, so 1 x to the 21 power, or just x to the 21. On the bottom, you do have y to the 6, because 3 joined down there with the other one. That should be enough to be able to get you through these monomials with common basis. Good luck. Let me know if you have any questions, folks.